we have the sixth chapter first one is the general principle the second chapter is column yeah. third chapter is beam column uh, chapter four is a uh, list frame chapter five is beam chapter six energy and numerical method so i'll cover all these uh, six chapters uh, firstly uh, i'd like to uh, introduce some general concept structural failure mechanism uh, it is korean so structural failure mechanism there are several uh, failure mechanism one is yielding uh, you must know yielding right another one is buckling uh, fatigue fracture there are also some uh, failure mechanism uh, uh, in this course we consider uh, failure mechanism of yielding and buckling especially uh, this course is a structural stability so we focus more on buckling so i'll compare the steel design uh, versus concrete design steel has some uh, stability problem because the steel the material uh, has a uh, very high strength so uh, in order to reduce the steel material we make steel member as a slender thin and slender so the buckling problem in steel member occurs okay if we consider the concrete as you know the concrete member is somewhat massive not slender so concrete member is not sensitive to buckling because they are they are not slender in fact the concrete member has the problem of crack but steel member uh, stability problem stability means buckling problem so design code uh, always consider buckling in uh, steel member design in this buckling problem uh, we have two uh, different buckling one is global buckling global buckling as you see here so the total member buckle like that we call it global buckling another side we have local buckling if you see wide frame section uh, loading apply the web uh, deformed like this we call it web clipping it is a web local buckling also uh, apply the loading and then the, this beam deformed like this okay so the upper flange is subjected to compression low flange is subjected to tension okay so this compression cause buckling on a uh, flange so we call it a uh, flange buckling if there is a compression then we have to consider the buckling okay so compression make buckling the another term is yielding it is a uh, stress strain relationship linear elastic range and then plastic so in steel member we have somewhat a uh, big strain after yielding so we call it uh, ductility so still uh, slowly fail due to ductility if there is no buckling okay in case of yielding failure still slowly fail but concrete fails suddenly okay? it is different between steel and concrete so the steel is uh, basically the ductile member i'd like to introduce some uh, stability analysis the stability analysis is another term is non-linear analysis that means we consider the uh, buckling in analysis yeah in undergraduate study it is cantilever column okay actual force applied on the top of the color lateral load h also applies the top of the color then uh, we calculate the reaction moment is h horizontal load times the length okay hl that is the the way of the undergraduate huh, study okay in this calculation uh, we ignore the deformed shape if the uh, lateral load uh, applied column deformed like that but uh, in this calculation we just ignore deformed shape and we use the simple uh, algebraic equation like this m equal hr so we call it the geometry linear analysis that means we do not consider deformed shape another term is the first order analysis uh, now you are a graduate student the loading conditions are same as the left hand side but we consider this deformed shape due to h the deflection is large delta due to h then when you calculate the 
bottom reaction moment is M equal H times L plus a vertical load P times this delta. So P delta is added. Consider deformed shape. So we can get P delta moment. In order to solve this problem, we have to use the differential equation. D square y, dx square. Yeah. The second derivative. Differential equation. We call uh, geometry learning analysis. Another term is second order analysis. Another term is stability analysis. If we draw this horizontal load and displacement uh, in undergraduate study, you just uh, consider this linear curve. Okay. Graduate study in this class, you have to consider this nonlinear curve due to considering uh, deformed shape. I'd like to compare the stability analysis and uh, plastic analysis. So stability analysis, this course, uh, structural stability. Plastic analysis is another course. So I'd like to show you some big picture between two different analysis. Stability analysis. As I mentioned, we consider uh, this kind of uh, uh, deformed shape, this P and delta. Uh, if we uh, uh, draw vertical axis is P, horizontal axis is delta, this P delta, okay? If we do plastic analysis, then the curve will go up like that, and then after yielding, we have the horizontal curve like, like this, and goes up when it meets strain hardening okay like that in stability analysis goes up and if the member buckles then the strength suddenly go down like that so we call it uh, stability analysis so in this stability analysis contains this descending part then uh, we know oh it is stability analysis plastic analysis doesn't have this descending part horizontal load uh, curve and go up like that okay so the strain hardening you might know stress strain uh, linear plateau and go up when we do the coupon test a uh, familiar curve isn't it yeah so in stability analysis consider geometry linearity plastic analysis consider material linearity do you understand the concept huh? so uh, i hope you understand from now on, uh, I'd like to overview six chapter okay, uh, of our course. In chapter one, we consider this member is rigid bar. That means there is no deformation. And then we just consider only one spring. We have deformation only this uh, spring. Why uh, do we uh, regard uh, this member as rigid? Because we would like to make problem simple. Uh, the important thing is that understand the basic concept. This is the better way to make the problem simple. If this bar is not rigid, uh, we have to use the differential equation. Okay? It is somewhat uh, complicated. So in chapter one, uh, we make this problem into uh, one degree of freedom system. Chapter two, color. The column is subjected to the axial load only, not moment. We consider the deformed shape. So this P times this delta should be considered. So the differential equation like this M internal moment sum here, internal moment equal EI pi, pi the curvature. This equal minus EI y2 prime. Okay, this is a differential equation. So from this differential equation, we get the PCR, P critical load, buckling load. Okay, the load leading to buckling of this member. Chapter three is beam column. What is the definition of a beam column? In fact, the term beam column uh, has been made by uh, Professor Chen, Chen, W.F. Chen. Yeah. So the definition of a beam column means the member subjected to bending and compression so uh, this member is subjected to compression and bending moment that is beam column if we consider the real frame like that we isolate the column like this and then apply actual load and bending moment so we solve problem under this boundary condition chapter four is a rigid frame here the rigid means the connection is rigid member is not rigid 
member deformed like this connection is rigid what does that mean connection is rigid that means connection angle maintain 90 degree this connection angle is originally 90 degree okay uh, after uh, deformation this this connection angle still maintain 90 degree then we call it the rigid frame in fact rigid connection frame okay but th the term is uh, somewhat long, so raise the frame. So, in order to make uh, 90 degree at the connection um, under the loading, then we have to make the raise connection like this. Uh, for example, welding. Uh, if we do welding, then we can make the raise connection. Another term is fully lasting connection. Originally 90 degree, like that, and then it rotate, still it maintain 90 degree, like that. But if you consider this kind of the semi rigid connection or flexible connection, this column B, and then if you consider this angle connection like that, okay, uh, this beam subjected to uh, some moment like this, but this angle deformed. So originally uh, 90 degree before the loading but after loading this angle change uh, the connection angle is not anymore 90 degree in this case we call it flexible connection or semi connection or partially restrained connection chapter 5 uh, we consider the beam the beam subjected to some lateral load uh, p like this if the loading applied at the top, then top planes uh, is subjected to compression. As I mentioned before, if there is a compression, then we have to consider the buckling. Now, top planes is compression, uh, bottom planes is uh, subjected to tension. Okay, so bottom planes try to keep its original position, but uh, top planes is subjected to compression. So it try to deform. How to deform? Like this. It deform laterally okay? and then rotate like that. So we call it lateral torsional buckling. This is lateral and torsion. So we call it lateral torsional buckling. So this uh, upper plane is subjected to compression. Huh? It try to buckle like that. But lower plane is subjected to tension. It try to keep its original position. So the buckle shape like that okay this lateral torsional buckling makes us to reduce bending capacity moment capacity of the beam due to buckling if there is no buckling then we have full plastic moment mp equal fy times plastic section modulus but if uh, a buckle occurs the moment capacity is not MP anymore. Moment capacity must be reduced. You know, to prevent this kind of lateral torsional buckling, you might see this kind of uh, bracing under the bridge with some interval, with 5 meter, 6 meter, like that. So this bracing prevent this kind of lateral torsional buckling. Uh, that means this bracing prevent uh, reducing the moment, the capacity. Chapter 6 is uh, energy and uh, numerical method. Energy uh, method, this is the total energy, pi equal internal energy and external energy summation, that is total energy. If we uh, take the derivative, uh, should be zero, okay? Because the pi should be stationary for equilibrium. In order to satisfy the stationary for equilibrium, Mathematically, if we take the derivative regarding the total energy, it should be zero. Okay? From this equation, we can get a PCR, critical action load. Okay? Another way is the numerical method. We divide the uh, distribution into several of the segments. They use the numerical method. Uh, we can calculate PCR. Okay, let's finish first lecture. See you in second lecture. Mm -hmm.